Okay, this is your video for the weigh scales, uh, Brian. This is the Spark SLS uh, interface. It's kind of an old thing. It's about 10 years old. And this is a force platform. Every time you hit it, you can see the force there. So uh, here, let me uh, show you how this works. Uh, you uh, stand on it, and the SLS gives you your, uh, your downward force. Now, uh, this takes some setting up, so let me show you how to set it up. So I just stopped the data collection there, and I'm going to go home here. That's going home. There is no stylus for this device. You just have to keep on pushing. Um, I want to uh, not save my data. So this is how you work this device. The battery is very weak because this guy is 10 years old. So uh, you need to keep it plugged in. It, the, the, it's plugged in through this um, steel ringed hole. That's how you plug it in, all right? It is not plugged in through any of these, uh, this plastic ringed hole over here, no. Not, not next to the power switch, no. Uh, it's only plugged in through this steel ringed hole with no pin inside, okay? Now, um, uh, let's see. Uh, the uh, the force platform is plugged in through here, all right? Uh, let me show you, I have another force platform in case you wanted to have more than one student work this at the same time. Uh, you see that this is asymmetric and um, it fits in an asymmetric way in here. All right, let me just put that in there and then you should see two sets of data, all right? Now, this is how, this is how you collect data. This is, this is a little uh, strange here. So you have to click on build, all right? And then you have to, oops, excuse me, <laughs> I farted. <laughs> and then you have to click on vertical force, and then you have to click on the graph, all right? And then you're gonna have a graph of the vertical force. And then if you're using a second force platform for another student, you gotta click on vertical force for that person too, and click on the graph. So then you have two graphs, all right? and then you can click OK. So you have to build your interface before you can do stuff, right? And then you're going to press the play button. And then, uh, let me hold this while I, see I am jumping on one platform, and then I'm jumping on the other platform, okay? So then uh, after that, I can stop the data collection and uh, and that's the data there. Uh, you can um, you can take a uh, snapshot of this, but uh, before you take a snapshot of the um, of the screen here, it's good to auto scale, and that's done with this button here. Uh, you press that button for the tools, and one of the tools is the auto scale tool. I think it's this one. Uh, there it is, the auto scale tool. So I'll press this button for tools, and then I'll press this button for auto scale, and that gives me time on, it's, it just makes it a little bit more visible. Now, uh, to um, take a snapshot, because you know, I don't really recommend you use the um, the snapshot feature here because you would things would get exported as image files, JPEGs, and uh, it's kind of useless. Uh, I don't know of a way to export the actual numeric data here. So uh, for lab reports, I recommend just kids use their cell phone camera or something. But if you want, uh, you can take snapshots here and, by cl clicking on this button. And you can al actually also um, use this uh, share button to um, have the kids type in text notes, which would be really silly because this device it's really slow, but uh, um, you, 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 you can um, export files to a USB drive uh, right here. Really don't recommend that though. <laughs> and um, and uh, the, th the, the, the tricky thing about using this device, Brian, is that the battery life is really bad. What does this mean? This means the entire time you're inside Arate, you've got to keep this plugged in and then Kids have to practice using the scales and this thing in your room while it's plugged in. And then when they know what to do, 
they need to unplug this, quickly walk to the elevator. This is not going to last very long at all. And then collect the data and then come back and plug it back in. Unless, of course, you guys have a um, portable power supply that can provide AC current because, I mean, of course, it's this is a DC device, but this is the only way I, that I have to charge it. The thing is 10 years old. There's no, like, USB-C charger for this or anything. So that's the only thing uh, tricky about using this, aside from, you know, the process of setting up the interface there. Now, uh, it's possible that uh, you might want to be collecting finer data than what this thing can do. Uh, it doesn't collect 100 samples per second the way the Vernier equipment does. Uh, I don't, I'm, not, I'm not even sure if it can collect 50 samples per second, but uh, if, for, for what you're doing, if this is too slow, then uh, I brought the, an analog bathroom scale for you. And the way you would have to use this is, um, you would have to zero it, of course. Uh, there's a, this is just a bathroom scale. So there's a, there's a zero, there's a, you see that knob? Yeah, there's a zeroing knob right there. And so then kids would go on here and you know what? The kid with the iPhone would have to record video and then put it in slow motion so that you could see the data. <laughs> so that's, uh, that's, that's, why I brought the uh, bathroom scale, just in case you need data that is happening so fast, changing so fast that the Spark SLS can't capture it. Then you could use somebody's iPhone video in slow-mo, uh, just pointing at the analog dial there and, um, and uh, with, 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 with plenty of bright light, of course, in the elevator.